All right, you all should have your calculators out. We're going to talk today about word problems that have to do with our angles of elevation and depression, okay? Depression. A lot of times, you guys are really good. Once this is set up, you're really good about punching the numbers in your calculator. It's the part of understanding what the word problems say and how to set them up that can cause us, yeah, that can cause us some issues. So this is a really good document for you guys to kind of look back on it kind of brings everything all together in one place but it has your sine your cosine and tangent these are trig functions that we're going to use to solve our triangles and then good little pictures of our angles of elevation and depression it says to think of the angle of elevation always measured from the ground up whenever they tell you that the angle of elevation is something that is inside the triangle i always draw my right triangles like this one is so I always have my angle of elevation in the bottom right-hand corner. Always. Mm -hmm. The angle of depression is created outside the triangle. You notice here, because there's someone standing on a cliff, standing on a tower. When they're standing there and they look down, the angle that's created is outside of your right triangle. So there's two ways to figure this out. You can either say that this angle here is 90 minus x or you can just put the x down here because the angle of depression on the outside would be the same as the angle of elevation on the inside that's probably an easier thing for you guys to do it's an easier thing for you just to remember that the angle of depression on the outside of the triangle is equivalent to the angle of elevation on the inside. So notice here, if they tell you that the angle of depression is 35 degrees, that's on the outside of the triangle, you can either say 90 minus 35 and get this 55 degrees here, or you can place the 35 degree depression on the inside of the triangle, the bottom, and call it the angle of elevation. Either way, and I'll do some problems both ways so you guys can see, but either way, it'll work. Yes, ma'am? Um, where, where? In assignments, go to today's date, 217. Okay. Yeah. I always, I personally always just use, put it as elevation. I do the same thing every single time. Mm -hmm. We're going to go through a bunch of these just so we get the hang of it, all right? It says round to the nearest hundredth, um, just round to the nearest foot, that's fine, just the nearest whole number. But I always, every single time I have a right triangle word problem, I draw my right triangle and I shape it just like this. I always have the height on the left, the X, the, the ground part, and then the hypotenuse, I always have it like that. It says a tower cast a shadow that's 60 feet long. Guys, where did I tell you shadows are? They're on the ground. They're down here. This, this right here is 60 feet. If you need to draw yourself a little picture, right, here's your tower. I'm a really good artist, so just be ready to be wowed. All right, a tower cast a shadow that is 60 feet long. Where is the sun? It's up here, right? Everybody understand that? There's the sun. It says the angle of elevation is 65 degrees. Where is my angle of elevation in the way that I drew my triangle? The bottom right hand corner. I'm always, that's always going to be my angle of elevation. How tall is the tower? Where, what are they asking me for? But what are they asking me for? The height, the height or the hypotenuse? The height. They're asking me how tall is the tower? So in regards to 65, X is your opposite side, right? And 60 is my adjacent. You guys agree with me? Yes or no? Okay, so I would say tangent 65 equals x over 60. If I gave you guys that problem, everybody in here can say, oh, you cross multiply. So 1 times x is x. And then I have 60 times the tangent of 65. And in your calculators, what do you get? Round it to the nearest foot. It's about how tall? About 129 feet tall. Okay, fine. The hardest part about these problems is getting the information 
on your triangle in the correct spot. That's your, the hardest part. And that's what we're gonna just keep working on. All right, again, this is right triangle trig. So I'm gonna draw my right triangle. There's my right triangle. Okay, so Matt is standing on the top of a cliff. Where is Matt? Is he down on the ground or is he up on the top of the cliff? Okay, Matt's up here. It says <clears throat> he's 300 feet above the lake. What are they telling me there? 305 feet. What part of my triangle are they telling me is 305 feet? The height of it. How, to, how high he is from the lake. He's on a cliff looking down. He's looking downwards at an angle of 42 degrees. All right. So we can look at this two different ways. I can say that 42 in the top up there is the same as 42 down here, correct? Or I can also say 90 minus 42, which is what, 48? I could say this angle here is 48 degrees. You can use either way, it does not matter. You'll get the same answer and I'll show you, I'm gonna do them both ways. But they're asking how far is the boat from the base of the cliff? So here's the boat. And here's the base of the cliff. What are they asking me for? The distance. The distance, right? From those two, they're asking me for the bottom here. So I'm going to set this up two different ways. I'm going to set this problem up two different ways. I'm going to first use 42 degrees as my reference angle. In regards to 42, what is the opposite side and what is the adjacent side? Good. So I would have tangent 42 equals opposite is 305 over x is my adjacent. Now, if you used 48 as your reference, that's fine. You can still do this and get the same answer. In this case, I would say tangent of 48 equals opposite in this case is x and adjacent is 305. Now, when we work this out, we'll get the same answer. I want you guys to do this both ways so you can see. If I cross multiply on the left-hand side, I have x times the tangent of 42 equals 305. Then I have to divide both sides by the tangent of 42. And then on the right-hand side, I'd cross multiply and I get x equals the tangent of 48 times 305. Do both of those in your calculator. 305 divided by the tangent of 42. What do you get? So about 339, okay. And then if you did tangent 48 times 305, what would you get? When you do the tangent of 48 times 305, what do you get? All right, you get the same exact thing. So depending upon how you guys want to deal with angles of depression and elevation, it's totally up to you. Angle of elevation for me is always going to be in the bottom right-hand corner because that's how I draw my triangle. If I were you, I would use the angle of depression as your angle of elevation. Or if you want to, you can do 90 minus and put it up in the top-hand corner. It does not matter. All right, so here we go. We have our friend Matt again, and he's still standing on the same cliff. So are, we're still 305 over here, correct? Okay. And it says the angle of depression, it's still 42. It's the same angle he's looking at. So I'm going to put it down here on the inside of my triangle as my elevation. And my boat is still here. It says, how far is Matt from the boat? What are we looking for here? Why are we looking? You're right. Why are we looking for the hypotenuse? Yep, that is the length from the boat to Matt. And I could see that really easily because I drew a silly little picture. But in regards to 42, because I'm going to use 42 as my angle of elevation, what is 305? Opposite. Opposite, good. And what is the hypo, What is X? No. The hypotenuse. Always the longest side across the right angles, our hypotenuse. So what trig function uses opposite and hypotenuse? Sine. sine. So I have sine 42 equals opposite, which is 305, over by hypotenuse, which is x. And how do we solve this? Cross multiply. So x times the sine of 42 equals 305 
divide both sides by the sine of 42. And what is x equal? The same thing. The same thing? It shouldn't. What's 305 divided by sine 42? How much is it? 456? Mm -hmm. About 456 feet. Now think about this, guys. You just found the hypotenuse. Same triangle as the problem before, but we found the hypotenuse, right? So it should make sense that your hypotenuse is a tad bit longer than the other side because your hypotenuse is the longest side of a right triangle. Everybody see that? Okay, so let's look at the next one. All right, we've got to read the words. Read the words that they give us. It says a ladder is 20 feet long, leaning against the side of a building. What part of my triangle is the ladder? It's the hypotenuse. It's leaning against the side of a building, okay? The angle formed between the ladder and the ground is 75. What is that? The angle of elevation. Good. Very good. How far is the bottom of the ladder from the base of the building? So here's my building. You guys impressed? And there's my ladder. So they want to know how far the base of the building is from the bottom of the ladder. What are we looking for? Mm -hmm. We're looking for this, this piece down here. So in regards to 75, what is X adjacent? And what is 20? Hypotenuse. What trig function uses adjacent and hypotenuse? Cosine. Cosine. Very good. So you have cosine 75 equals X over 20. So cross multiply. X equals, in your calculator, you hit 20 cosine 75. And what's X about? About how much? About five feet? Okay, that makes sense. Your ladder's only 20 feet long. So think about this. Like in your brain, think about what that looks like. You have a 20 foot long ladder and you're leaning it against the side of the house. It's not gonna be more than four or five feet away from the base of the house. That should make sense. Questions? Okay. No, the ladder is 20 feet. Oh, okay. The ladder itself is 20 feet. When it, you lean it against the house, that space from the bottom is only five feet. Okay. All right, this next one got a, a few of us a little confused. Um, oh, no, not this one, the, the one about the kite, but we're okay. Hold on. All right, now we have our friend John. Okay, again, we're talking about right triangle tricks, so draw a right triangle. John wants to measure the height of a tree. Okay, let's think about what a tree looks like. Where is a tree? Does it lay on the ground? No, it extends up in the air, right? So there's my tree. He walks, okay, look, put yourself at the tree. John walks 100 feet from the base of the tree and looks up. What part are they giving us with that? The distance from where? From the tree over here. John walked 100 feet. It says he walked 100 feet from the base of the tree, and he looked where? Oh, oh. Up. So he gave us the angle of elevation. elevation. Our angle of elevation is 33 degrees because he walked across, and he turned around, and he looked up. How tall is the tree? Are they asking for the hypotenuse or the height? height. The height. How tall is the tree? How high is something above the ground? How tall is the building those all are going to be height things so think about this in regards to 33 x is your opposite and 100 is your adjacent so what trig function uses opposite and adjacent tangent so tangent 33 equals opposite over adjacent good again how do we solve this cross multiply x equals 100 times the tangent of 33 and round your answer to the nearest foot. Around 65. Around 65 feet? Is that what we're talking about? Feet? Yeah. You always want to have your, your um, unit, whatever it is, meters, feet, yards, whatever they're talking about. For a complete answer, you need to have your units as well. Okay, you guys are doing good. 
All right, again, what kind of trigonometry are we talking about now? Right triangle trig, right? So I'm going to draw my right triangle. Keep reminding yourself of that. If you notice, I've drawn my right triangle the exact same way every single time. A flagpole. Think about a flagpole, guys. Where is the flagpole? You guys agree with me? That's my flagpole? Yeah. Right? Yeah. A flagpole. Standing up in the... Okay. Yes. I was hoping, like, could you do this in, like, real life? Like, if you walk, like, 10 feet this way and, like... Yeah, up, absolutely. Yeah. Work? Yeah, absolutely. Did you just say, are you sure? No, it's like, for sure. Oh. <laughs> yes, I'm sure. All right. The flagpole... Cast a shadow 40 feet long. Where is the 40? What are they telling me that is 40 feet long? Bottom. The bottom, right? Remember, shadows are along the ground, so I have 40 feet down here. The elevation to the sun, where is that? Uh, bottom, right-hand corner. The elevation to the sun. How tall is the flagpole? What are they asking? For the height. They're asking for the height. So from 31 degrees... I have opposite is my x, and my adjacent is 40. So I have tangent of 31 equals opposite over adjacent. Cross multiply. Again, we're doing the same thing. And I know this is easier, guys, when I'm doing it with you. I know that. I'm going to help you set up some of the word problems that you guys are going to have for homework. Not all of them. But about how tall is this flagpole if I have 40 times the tangent of 31? About what? 24. About 24? You guys agree? Okay, about 24 feet tall. All right, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Okay. All right, how many of you, by show of hands, have ever flown a kite? Okay, a little more than last period. Last period, there's like one person that's flown a kite. So, Kelly is flying a kite which the angle of elevation is 70, the string of the kite 65 meters long, how far is the kite above the ground? What kind of a shape should I draw first? A right triangle, okay? We're gonna draw a right triangle. Now guys, think about this for a second. If you've ever been at the beach or a park and flown a kite, do you stand there and hold the kite like this and it just goes straight up in the air? No, no that never happens. The kite string, guys, if the string, how do you hold the kite? Show me what your arm would be doing. It's like this, right? Good. So what are they telling you is 65 meters long? The hypotenuse. Good. If they were talking about a balloon, okay, maybe. Maybe the balloon goes straight up in the air. But a kite, never, ever, ever will you just stand there and it goes straight above your head. Now, she's flying the kite at the angle of elevation of 70. So that's down here. So they want to know how far the kite is above the ground. What are they looking for? The height. How high is the kite above the ground? If I measured from the ground to where the kite is, what that would be the height. In regards to 70, what trig function would you use here? 70, x is your opposite, but what is 65? Good, so you would use what, Kara? Sine. So you have sine 70 equals x over 65. Cross multiply, 65 times the sine of 70. About how high is the kite off the ground? 61. About 61 meters. Okay. Good. Good, good, good. So no. Not necessarily. They could tell you that you walked 30 feet from something to another and the kite string was 65. Or they could ask you how far you are standing away from something. If the kite string is 65, then it would be adjacent and hypotenuse. I, I, correct. I just use X because it's my unknown. Okay, let's look at this one. Let's talk about this one for a second. Again, right triangle. From a 200-foot observation tower at the beach. What are they telling me? They're telling me that the tower is how many feet tall? 200. 200, okay. There's a man at the top of the tower, right? He's up here, and he sees what? He sees a whale. 
I'm not, I'll, okay. That, there's my whale. All right, he sees the whale. Does everyone see the whale swimming? The angle of depression to the whale is seven degrees. So look, this is seven degrees here. So I have two options. I can say, all right, if the angle of depression is seven degrees, then I know that the angle of elevation from the other side is seven degrees. Or I could say that this angle measure right here is how much? 90 minus seven, which is 83, okay? Either one of those, you can use either one of those as your angle of reference. It doesn't matter. You get the same answer. You just have to set your triangle up correctly. It says, how far is the whale from the shoreline? Am I looking at how far the whale is from Jack? Oh, we don't know his name. I just made it up. Do we, <laughs> Jack, Matt, somebody? Do I want to know how far the whale is from the person or the whale is from the shoreline? So which one am I looking for here? I'm looking for the bottom. I'm looking for this piece here. If I was looking at how far the whale was away from the person, that I would look at the hypotenuse. So again, this is one of these problems. You can set up two different ways. You can either use the angle of elevation as your reference. So you can use seven. So in regards to seven degrees, what is 200 and what is X? X is adjacent, good, and 200s are opposite, perfect. So you would use what trig function? Good, tangent of seven equals 200 over X, good. Now say you wanted to use this problem, but you wanted to say that the angle of depression was seven, so the angle inside the triangle left over was 83. In regards to 83, what is x and what is 200? x is the opposite and 200 is the adjacent. So then this one would be tangent of 83 equals x over 200. Again, either way, it doesn't matter. You can't switch the 200 and the x if you use the same angle. But since you're using the, uh, the opposite angles, this will work either way. So if I cross multiply here, I have 200 equals x times the tangent of 7. Divide both sides by tan 7. And x equals what? What's 200 divided by the tangent of 7? 1,629. 1, feet, about. Okay, that makes sense. You're not going to get real close to a whale, probably. Over here, if I did it using 83, I would have x equals 200 times the tangent of 83. And what would I get? The same exact thing, 1,629 feet. So angle of depression is not, it's not any harder. It just depends on how you want to look at it. You can either use your angle of depression that they give you as the angle of elevation. Just got to make sure you put it in the right spot. Or you can do 90 minus. If I were you, I would draw my right triangle the exact same way, and I'd put the angle of elevation depression in the exact same spot. Every single time you can do that. That will work every time. Do you have a question? Yeah. What's up? Why couldn't you just divide the numbers? Where? From 10, 7, divided by 1 equals 200 divided by x. From here? Yeah. Well, you have to get x by itself. So this is x times whatever the tangent of 7 is. It's like saying 3x. So in order to get x by itself, you would divide by 3. So this, you would divide by the tangent of 7. It's just a number. It's just a, a yucky number. So we leave it like that. Yep. All right, let's look at some of these. I'm not doing all of these with you. But let's just look at some of these. Some of them are a little harder than others. This first one's not hard. It's just got a lot of words. A damsel in distress is being held captive in a tower. Does that sentence have anything to do with anything that we're talking about? No. No. Her knight in shining armor, what a lucky girl, is on the ground below with a what? With a ladder. Immediately when you guys hear on the ground with a ladder, what should you think of? Okay, but what does a ladder represent a lot of times? No. The hypotenuse. A lot of times the ladder is your hypotenuse. 
He's standing 15 feet away. Look, here's my triangle. 15 feet away from the damsel in distress. What part is that of my triangle? The bottom, 15 feet away. He looks up at this poor girl that he's going to save at an angle of what? 60 degrees. I want to know how long the ladder has to be. What am I looking for? The hypotenuse. All right. Once we put that together, it's not bad. What trig function uses adjacent and hypotenuse? Cosine. So cosine 60 equals 15 over x. Cross multiply, you get 15 equals x times the cosine of 60. Divide by cosine 60. How long the ladder got to be? How long's the ladder? So about 30 feet. Good. All right, look at the next one. Suppose you're flying a kite and it gets caught in the top of the tree. You've let out all the 100 feet of string. Guys, a kite, the string of a kite. What part of the triangle is the string of a kite? The hypotenuse, good. You wanna know how tall the tree is, you're looking for the height. All right, let's talk about this one, number five. A sub submersible traveling at a depth of 200 feet. Okay, all that is is a submarine. So think about this, look. Here's my submarine. Right, looks just like a submarine. That's the periscope looking out. <laughs> but it says the submersible, whatever, is traveling at a depth of 200 feet. So here it is, and it dives down at an angle of 15 degrees, right? We're talking about a right triangle. So it dives down at 15 degrees. Where else can I put 15 degrees? On the inside at the bottom, good. It travels a distance of 100 and f or 1,500 feet horizontally. Which part of my triangle is horizontal? The bottom. the bottom. Okay, so this is 1,500. Good. What is the depth of the submersible after the dive? What are we looking for? Height. The, height. the height. Okay, I agreed with that. What does the 250 have to do with this problem? Think about this. How deep was this submarine before it did its dive down? 250. So this piece right here is 250, correct? So once I find the height, which is my X value, how do I figure out how far it is from the top of the surface down to where this thing dove down to? I have to add that 250. Good. Very good. This is why pictures are really important. I'm just setting some of these up for you guys so you can look at it. All right, to the next ones. Um, some of these are difficult. I know that. Brothers Bob and Tom buy a tent that has a center pole 6.25 feet high. What does a tent look like? Like a, like a triangle. You guys agree that a tent generally would look like this? Where is the center pole? Right down here in the middle. So in a sense here, what did I just create? Two right triangles. Good. It says that the center pole is 6.2 feet high. So this pole right there is 6.25 feet. If the sides of the tent are making a 50 degree angle with the ground, where is my 50? Over here, right? 50 here. And 50 here. How wide is the tent? Hmm. How wide is the tent? How far is it from here to here? Can you guys figure that out? Yeah. How would you do it? So you have to use um, tangent. Okay, so I, I'm going to find this piece, you tell me? And then, yeah, and then you also find the other piece, or is it going to be the same? Okay, so Pablo is saying, all right, my pole is in the center, right? Yeah. So if I know this piece, I know the height is 6.25. Yeah. 
I can find out how wide this piece is, and then it's the same as this piece. So I have to say two times whatever value I find. Very good. Good job, Pablo. All right, you guys try, 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 try to set up and solve 9, 10, and the challenge. I know that they are difficult. I am aware of that. We will go over them tomorrow. I will post the answers worked out so you guys can see it. But you did a really good job today with these word problems. They're not easy. I know that. You did a really good job.